Now that we know what MAC addresses are, we can talk about Ethernet switching and how Layer 2 addresses are used to switch frames. Source MAC addresses are learned as they enter a switch port. And once a MAC address is learned, it is entered into the CAM table. The CAM table is the same thing as the MAC address table, so you're going to hear both of those used interchangeably. Frames with unknown destination MAC addresses are broadcast at all ports, except the port it was received on. Once a MAC address is known, frames with known destination MAC addresses can be forwarded directly out host ports. Let's jump into a diagram now to show you what we mean when we talk about forwarding frames out of Ethernet switch ports and how we can build our CAM or MAC address tables. Here we're going to go over how MAC addresses are switched and how our CAM tables are built. The first key thing to know is that switches flood unknown MAC address destinations out of every port except for the port that it received the frame on. And switches add source learned MAC addresses to the CAM table. So for our CAM tables to be built, the switches are going to look at our Ethernet frames and then record the interfaces that source MAC addresses are learned on so that the switches know how to send the traffic back to that MAC address. So let's jump right into it and we're going to look at what would happen if host A wanted to communicate with host B through these layer 2 switches. So when it's Ethernet frame it's going to add its MAC address as the source MAC address and of course the B computer's MAC address as its destination MAC address. It's going to forward it out its network interface card up to the switch. It's going to first look at the destination MAC address which as you can see Switch 1's CAM table on the left is completely empty at, empty at the moment and it doesn't know any MAC address entries. So it's going to look at that destination MAC address and realize that it does not know what port to send it out of and it's going to flood it out of all ports within that VLAN. And then it's going to add PCA's MAC address that it learned inbound on the G00 interface to the MAC address table since it knows that that source MAC address resides on that port. Switch 2 also does not have a CAM table entry for host B's MAC address so it's going to just add the source MAC address entry for host A's MAC address coming in on port G01 and then it's going to flood the frame out all ports since it does not know which port host B's MAC address resides off of. Once host B receives the frame, it's going to process it since the destination MAC address is its own. When it goes to respond back to host A, now the destination MAC address is going to be host A's MAC address and the source is going to be its own. This time, when we send the frame to switch to, and it looks at the destination MAC address, it actually has an entry for that MAC address and it knows that it can send the frame out of port G01 to find its way back to that host. And it doesn't have to flood the frame out of all ports. Not only is it going to have the CAM table entry already for host A's MAC, but now when host B responds, since its MAC address is the source now, now Switch 2 is going to be able to add a CAM table entry for host B's MAC address coming in on port G00. So Switch 2 is going to send this frame out G01 to find its way back to host A. Switch 1 also already has a CAM table entry for host A's MAC address so it knows that it needs to forward this frame out of port G00 to get the frame to the destination host. And it's also going to add a CAM table entry for host B's MAC address on port G01 since that's where it learned about that source MAC address. Then it's going to send the frame down to host A and we've completed a layer 2 switched path and built CAM table entries for both of these hosts. So now any future communication the switches know exactly which ports to send the layer 2 frames out of and they do not have to flood the frames out of all ports. 
One last thing to mention about our MAC address tables, there's a default aging timer of 300 seconds, so if we have a MAC address table entry, it's going to age out after 300 seconds. But with continuous forwarding on the Ethernet ports, we're going to relearn that MAC address table entry really fast. So it's important to have an aging timer, so if you unplug your device and that MAC address no longer resides off of a specific port, the switch can time the entry out so that it can learn a new entry somewhere else on the network. Now we'll jump into a lab switch so we can actually look at a real cam table on our switch here. So I'll run show MAC address table and you can see these mappings I have that were dynamically learned for these different MAC addresses that live on these different switch ports. So this is what your cam table looks like. And it also has a VLAN column which we'll get into VLANs next here and you'll see that cam tables have specific table entries for each VLAN. So each VLAN is basically going to have its own cam table. Another key concept to understand with layer 2 switching is the behavior for forwarding broadcast frames. A broadcast frame is anything with destination MAC address of all Fs. And the purpose of the frame is to get to every host within that LAN. When switches receive broadcast frames, they will forward them out of all ports, except for the port that it was received on, regardless of the CAM table. So if you look here, if host A forwarded a broadcast frame, switch 1 would forward it out of all ports, except for the port it received it on, and switch 2 would do the same. And you'll see when we get into VLANs on how important it is to segment LANs so that we don't have excess broadcast traffic throughout our LANs. Next we have VLANs, Virtual Local Area Networks. VLANs are logical layer 2 networks that are used to create broadcast domains to segment our layer 2 traffic. As I previously mentioned, we'll see when we look at our CAM table, or MAC address table, we'll actually have specific table mappings for each VLAN, since it's going to create a virtual LAN. Traffic within a VLAN is isolated until it's routed out of its VLAN. So if you didn't have any layer 3 routing, devices would only be able to communicate with each other within their local VLAN. Once you introduce a layer 3 switch, and you can do inter-VLAN routing, then you can send traffic between different VLANs. VLANs can also be thought of as a network, so if you're looking at layer 3 addressing, there's typically a one-to-one -one mapping between VLANs and IP subnets. Not only can VLANs be used just to separate broadcast traffic, but they can also be used to identify different types of traffic. Typically, device types will have their own VLAN. For example, servers, voice, and wireless devices would all have their own VLANs to segment their traffic. Now we'll jump into a diagram to look at what a VLAN looks like within a switched network. Here in this diagram, we have four hosts and two switches. Now without VLANs, all of these devices could just communicate with each other at a layer two level. If we assign their switch ports to VLANs, then we can create our virtual LANs for those devices. So here we have A and B hosts on VLAN 2 and C and D hosts on VLAN 3, each in their own broadcast domain. For example, if host A were to send a broadcast frame within its LAN, it would be isolated and stuck within the VLAN 2 switched bubble and would not be able to make its way onto the LAN that C and D reside on. Now that we know what VLANs are, you'll notice in your CAM table that you'll have a VLAN column that defines which VLAN the MAC address sources are learned on. VLANs also define IP subnets. So you're going to have a one-to-one -one relationship between your network and the VLAN that you're on. So in this example, 
users A and B since they're part of VLAN 2, we would pick a specific subnet that would be allocated for VLAN 2 devices. So all the devices on VLAN 2 would be, in this example, they'd be on the 10.0.2.0 network and the VLAN 3 devices would be on 10.0.3.0. Now you don't have to match the VLAN ID within your subnet prefixes, but if you can, it can really make things easy. You can see in this example how we use the VLAN ID within the third octet to define the network, and it kind of makes it a, a pretty clean mapping. So as soon as I look at 10.0.2, I know that that's part of VLAN 2, and the same with 10.0.3 being a part of VLAN 3. Now when you get on huge networks where you have more than 255 VLANs, then you can't always keep that same mapping, but when you can, definitely try to take advantage of that easy VLAN ID to octet mapping. I'm back in the lab switch here. Let's take a look at our VLAN database by running the command show VLAN. You can see all the VLANs I have configured on this switch here. And you can see how you would typically break up device types within VLAN. So I have a device management VLAN, server management, all types of different management networks, and then also VLANs for the type of user access. So wireless data and wireless guests are going to be on different VLANs, and that's a way you can segment your traffic. And also shows you not only the VLAN IDs, the VLAN names, and ports that are participating on those VLANs. Let's run the show MAC address table command again. Now that we have a better understanding about VLANs, and you can see you have this VLAN column to show you each VLAN's MAC address table entry. So you can actually run the command show MAC address table and then say a specific VLAN and then you'll see the MAC address is learned just for that one VLAN for that one virtual LAN. Now let's briefly go over Ethernet frame fields. Ethernet frames define how layer 2 information is formatted. Formats include DIX, IEEE 802.3, it interprets the binary data from layer 1 bits, you can see in the bottom the different Ethernet frame fields. We have preamble, SFD, destination and source MAC addresses, the length field, data and pad, and the FCS field. The preamble does synchronization. The SFD or start frame delimiter declares the next byte to be the destination MAC field. The destination MAC is, of course, the layer 2 address endpoint, and the source MAC is the, the sender's layer 2 address. The length field specifies the data length. Data and pad hold higher layer data like the IP packet, and the frame check sequence checks for transmission errors.